As an undergrad, I optimized the beamline for a particle physics experiment. Let me tell you about it. The goal of the experiment was to measure how often a particular type of charged subatomic particle, called a positive k on color-coded in green, decays in a particular way. Unfortunately, this type of decay is extraordinarily rare, happening about once every 100 billion decays. And so if you want to measure this decay mode, your signal-to-noise ratio must be in the floor. So my job was twofold. First, I had to ensure that the particle beam actually made it from the accelerator to the detector. But secondly, and more importantly, I needed to ensure that the particle beam was as pure as possible. We couldn't have any other particles in the beam besides positive kaons, and that's tricky. See, the way that the positive kaons are made is by smashing a high-energy proton beam into a brick made of platinum. When this happens, all sorts of particles are shot out in every direction, but most of them end up flying out in the same direction that the proton beam came in. Now, most of the high-energy protons will also just keep going forward, so if we want to have a clean experiment, we can't put the detector along the line of sight of the proton beam. So we have to somehow bend the particles that we want out of the way and redirect them. And that's not really a problem because the protons are much higher energy than the kaons we want, so we can use a weak magnet that will only slightly bend the protons away, but will bend the kaons away plenty. The trouble is that kaons aren't the only particles that are produced in this process. Another positively charged subatomic particle, called the pion, color-coded in red, is also produced in these collisions. And worse still, the decay we're trying to observe was a kaon decaying into a pion and two neutrinos. So having pions polluting the particle beam would completely ruin the experiment. So after we bent the initial particle beam out of the way, we needed to filter as many pions out as we could without losing too many kaons, all the while keeping the beam focused, and that's no easy task. The bends in the beam line were tuned to allow only positively charged particles with a certain amount of momentum through. Too much momentum or too little, and the particle doesn't bend the right amount to continue on its way. And once the entire beam consisted of particles with roughly the same momentum, we could use perpendicular electric and magnetic fields to deflect particles that don't have the mass that we wanted. And fortunately, pions have a different mass from kaons. Once they were deflected, it's just a matter of filtering them out. So we placed a block of tungsten with a tiny horizontal slit in it, so only the particles with the right mass can pass through unimpeded. The rest, which are hopefully all the pions, slam into the tungsten and are either absorbed or scattered everywhere. We did this mass filtering process twice to obtain a very pure beam of kaons, all the while keeping the beam focused and minimizing kaon loss. To put into perspective how difficult this was, the beam entering the beamline had a ratio of pions to kaons of about 22 to 1. We needed to improve this by a factor of about 400 while not losing many kaons along the way and maintaining a small output beam. Unfortunately, optimizing for this involved finely tuning 29 parameters, each of which affected the others in a nonlinear way. So we turned to a simple evolutionary algorithm to solve the problem. And overall, we were successful. The end result of the beamline performed spectacularly in simulations, as you can see here, resulting in near-perfect suppression of pions while achieving a high concentration of kaons in a final beam less than a centimeter across. Unfortunately, the beamline was never built as grant funding dried up. Oh well.